Welcome to Knickknacks Corner. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the book review for The Burning God, the third book in the Poppy War series. This will have spoilers. We're on the final book, so we're going to talk spoilers. Um, I absolutely love this book. <laughs> um, I had so much fun reading it. The entire trilogy has just been a quick and easy read. I have enjoyed everything I've gotten my hands into for it. R.F. Kuang, Rebecca Kong, Kuang, uh, has done an amazing, amazing job at her first trilogy in fantasy that she's ever touched upon. We're looking at 19th to 20th century China history uh, with fantasy elements. Uh, basically, you can pull gods down to inhabit your body, to use them to fight wars with you. The only kickback to that is the gods will make you go crazy because they share your head with you. And I found Rin's psychopathic journey through this series to be amazing. Um, I was actually watching uh, Tammy Reed's. Uh, she mentioned how uh, Kitai was worse because he enabled Rin to do all that. And I agree with her on that. Um, However, I wouldn't change a thing because I love the fact that Katai allowed Rin to be her most destructive self whenever she wanted to be. So it was wonderful. Of course, she's missing her hand from the previous book. And so she's got uh, just a single hand. And I love it when characters lose a limb, especially their strong. I guess it was her right hand uh, because she's has to use her left. and. I love it when they always take away a character's strongest hand. They always say people like, that's my right hand man. Because if they're right handed, sorry to anyone who's a lefty, but if you're right handed, that's your dominant hand. And so therefore your right hand man is the person that's an extension of your right hand. They're the person you rely on the most. So Kite would be Ren's uh, proverbial right hand uh, throughout this book because he gives her the power that she needs in order to fight the wars. She does fight left-handed, she's just kind of clumsy with it. And uh, it was just so wonderful to see the disability uh, make it a little bit more difficult for her to do anything she had to do. However, everything happens for a reason in this book and it is so well done. We get to see Master Jin Yen again and we get to also see uh, the Viper, Vipers, and as well as the Dragon uh, Warlord, um, Rega. So I kind of want more Trifecta. I would love just a single standalone book about the Trifecta and then becoming the Trifecta. I think that would be such an interesting story to read. Uh, we get little hints and nods to it in the book, uh, The Burning God, as to uh, who they really are, where they came from, and everything like that. And when Rin brought down the mountain and then also destroyed all the airships, was just such an epic scene. And I know that she's got a TV show coming out for it that's going to be a show for uh, the Poppy War trilogy. And I really cannot wait to see that scene come to life. Just the whole entire the trifecta being taken down as long as well as uh, Naza's um, uh, airships because the Hesperians brought over all this technology for them to use and it starts to get a different type of warfare and I really love that especially for a fantasy setting um, I get so much um, European style fantasy all over the place European, 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 European style, European style, European style. Let's see here. You know, like that's all European style. It's just, there's a lot of European style fantasy and I've read a lot of it and I enjoy it. It's great and all, but to get a Chinese inspired fantasy was something different. It's sort of like when I'm reading The Rage of Dragons and stuff, 
I'm getting an African style uh, fantasy. It's different. It's something I'm really enjoying and something I love about it because it's stuff that I don't know anything about. And um, I, I'm a huge history buff, so diving into the history behind the stories has always been a blast. And Arif Kuang made me go and look at 19th and 20th century China to understand what was going on inside the books a whole lot more. And I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so I appreciate that when a book makes me go and look into the history. Like when I did um, The Witcher, I looked at Polish history because a lot of it was based on Polish uh, um and it's gone. Polish uh, fairy tales, things like that. So I, I definitely uh, looked into that and just sort of the same thing with the Poppy War. I looked into the Chinese history and you will be entertained if you love history. Another thing I loved about it was the ending of the book there. I found the last 30 pages should have been an appendix. However, I thought it was fantastic because it wrapped everything up. It gave us everything left over at the end. Um, and one thing that I really loved was actually when Rin, Naza, and Kite all sit down and share a drink and just kind of, you know, they're together. Even though they're enemies, they're together. They're sitting together. It, um, RF Kuang even mentioned it that she wrote it as a uh, sort of the World War II equivalent of when the war stopped on Christmas Day. Everyone sat down, had some food, drinks together, even though they're the people you're at war with. And I really loved how she pulled that out and did a great job at blending it into the story. And it was something I really appreciated. This book, um, I initially gave it a 4 out of 5, but I think I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 because the, it was amazing the whole way through. Um, I would have said 4 out of 5, but I've thought more on the ending since it has since I finished it, and I, I think the ending is perfect. Like I said, the last 30 pages could be an appendix, but um, they give you all the information you need to wrap up the story, and I'm happy for that. I just found the last 30 pages wasn't up to Rebecca's writing style. I found it was more like, here's a bunch of information, which is okay. Um, cause my favorite story, Lord of the Rings, uh, the big thing that they do is it ends and it ends and it ends and it ends. And then there's an appendix after that, that gives you stuff about the whole fellowship. And this one, it kind of has an ama it's like written super well amazingly right up until a certain point within like the last 30 pages and I felt the ending was phenomenal like so well done and then all of a sudden it's like 30 pages of information about what happens after this fact and I am okay with that I think that's great because it ends the story it gives you a finality to it like that's the thing I love about it and I am so happy I've read this. It's one of my favorite fantasy trilogies, uh, actually fantasy series that I've ever read. Um, it's moving The Witcher aside. It's actually just below Lord of the Rings, I think. I, it's Game of Thrones keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. But once Game of Thrones finishes, that's also going to be another story too. But this one has moved up to my favorite fantasy that's not Lord of the Rings and I am going to push this book on everyone I possibly can because it is like a good drug. Everyone should try it. So good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. I did enough rambling for today on that. If you guys have any comments, let me know. And I hope you guys all are well. And uh, thank you for coming by to the corner and you should definitely pick up the Poppy War series. So you guys have a great day. Bye.